In the heart of the sun-baked American Southwest, a civilization flourished with breathtaking cliff dwellings, intricate road networks, and a society steeped in mystery. Yet, despite their architectural prowess and cultural achievements, the Anasazi, also known as the ancestral Puebloans, vanished from their once thriving settlements, leaving behind an enigma that echoes through the canyons and mesas to this day. The disappearance of the Anasazi is a historical mystery that revolves around the sudden abandonment of elaborate cliff dwellings and settlements in the American Southwest. The Anasazi inhabited the region from approximately 200 to 1300 CE, leaving behind a remarkable architectural legacy and a complex society. Within the past decade, however, archaeologists have wrung from the pristine ruins new understandings about why the Anasazi left, and the picture that emerges is dark. It includes violence and warfare, even cannibalism, among the Anasazi themselves. What awful event forced the Anasazi to flee their homeland, never to return? Figuring out how the Anasazi flourished but ultimately failed is more than just solving a 700-year-old mystery, and your nearby historian will accompany you on that journey. The Anasazi were the predecessors of today's Pueblo Indians, including the Hopi and Zuni, residing in communities along the Rio Grande and northern Arizona. Their rise occurred as early as 1500 BC with Chaco Canyon, a cultural hub in western New Mexico during the 10th and 11th centuries, serving as their center. Their territory encompassed the Four Corners region, an expansive 30,000 square mile expanse marked by sandstone canyons, mesas, and buttes. Up to 30,000 people populated this land, constructing remarkable villages such as Chaco Canyon's Pueblo Bonito, a sprawling complex with around 800 rooms soaring up to five stories high. Their legacy was further etched into the landscape through a 400 mile network of roads and intricate astronomical observatories. The Anasazi were skilled builders and farmers, constructing intricate multi-story stone dwellings nestled into cliffs and canyons. They created extensive networks of roads and trade routes, showcasing advanced engineering for their time. The ruins of their settlements, such as Mesa Verde in Colorado and Chaco Canyon in New Mexico, bear witness to their sophisticated architecture. Around the 13th century, however, a significant shift occurred. The once thriving settlements were abruptly abandoned. While the Anasazi's disappearance is still shrouded in mystery, their legacy continues to captivate modern researchers and enthusiasts. Today's Pueblo Indians have oral histories about their people's migration, but the details of these stories remain closely guarded secrets. Within the past decade, however, archaeologists have wrung from the pristine ruins new understandings about why the Anasazi left, and the picture that emerges is dark. It includes violence and warfare, even cannibalism among the Anasazi themselves. What drove the Anasazi to retreat to the cliffs and fortified villages? And later, what precipitated the exodus? For a long time, experts focused on environmental explanations, but it seems there are other things to be discovered yet. The year 1200 marked a turning point for the Anasazi. Amid their society, distressing transformations began to unravel unpredictable climate patterns and an atmosphere of fear that led to escalating violence. In the 11th and early 12th centuries, evidence of warfare was scarce, yet executions hinted at a growing unease. The governing structure sought to maintain control by making examples of social outcasts through execution and even cannibalism.
the harmony of their society began to disintegrate as violence festered, leading to alliances and confrontations, even persisting into the Spanish colonial period. Amid the evidence of conflict, signs of cannibalism emerged, sparking intense controversy. The debate around prehistoric cannibalism escalated, fueling disagreement among scholars in the Pueblo communities. But archaeological evidence, including the discovery of human protein myoglobin and coprolites, began to weave a grisly narrative of desperation, violence, and survival. As the 13th century came to a close, the Anasazi's strategies for survival seemed to crumble. How did this sophisticated society end up with cannibalism, and is there enough evidence out there to support such a claim? Suspicions of Anasazi cannibalism were first raised in the late 19th century, but it wasn't until the 1970s that a handful of physical anthropologists, including Christy Turner of Arizona State University, really pushed the argument. Turner's 1999 book, Man Corn, documents evidence of 76 different cases of prehistoric cannibalism in the Southwest that he uncovered during more than 30 years of research. Turner developed six criteria for detecting cannibalism from bones. He claimed to have discovered that nearly 300 individuals had been victims of cannibalism. Turner found that the bones had butcher cuts and showed evidence of having been cooked in a pot. In a study published in Nature in 2000, University of Colorado biochemist Richard Marlar and his colleagues reported the presence in the coprolite of a human protein called myoglobin, which occurs only in human muscle tissue. Its presence could have resulted only from the consumption of human flesh. American Indian groups and other archaeologists are skeptical. And while the evidence is difficult to refute, the meaning of the findings is still open to debate. Archaeologists now generally agree about what they call the push that prompted the Anasazi to flee the Four Corners region at the end of the 13th century. It seems to have originated with environmental catastrophes, which in turn may have given birth to violence and internecine warfare after 1250, yet hard times alone do not account for the mass abandonment, nor is it clear how resettling in another location would have solved the problem. During the past 15 years, some experts have increasingly insisted that there must also have been a pull drawing the Anasazi to the south and east, something so appealing that it lured them from their ancestral homeland. Several archaeologists have argued that the pull was the Kachina cult. Kachinas are not simply the dolls sold today to tourists in Pueblo gift shops. They are a pantheon of at least 400 deities who intercede with the gods to ensure rain and fertility. Even today, Puebloan life often revolves around Kachina beliefs, which promise protection and procreation. In upcoming videos, your nearby historian will delve deeply into all potential reasons for the Anasazi disappearance, so be sure to subscribe. The vanishing of the Anasazi serves as a reminder of the complex interplay between environmental changes, social dynamics, and the resilience of ancient civilizations. For those hungry for more riveting stories from the past, our next video on the channel is a must-watch. You'll find the link in the description, ready to transport you to the captivating world of the Maya civilization and their disappearance. A story that resonates with the mysteries we're uncovering. Your support for Nearby Historian fuels our mission to unravel history's secrets, one narrative at a time. So if this journey through time has ignited your curiosity, remember to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up.